Welcome to Super Kid Academy, a place where ordinary kids do extraordinary things through the power of God's Word. We meet every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for Sunday school, and our main service begins at 10 a.m. We also have Wednesday night programming that starts at 7 p.m., where our students receive hands-on training and experience. They do arts and crafts, learn how to operate cameras, sing, cook, prepare and write sermons, and many more exciting things. Make sure to come and visit Super Kid Academy. I was going down, thought it was for the count, then I found your love. I had wandered off, thought I had gone too far, there I found your love. Back again Now I am rising 
super kids. Raise your hand if Jesus moved in your life this morning. Praise the Lord. Do you remember what Pastor Brian said? He said that you would come to the service tonight and you would still be what? Anybody remember? What word he used? You would still be free. Yeah, do you remember that? You guys experienced freedom this morning because the word of God says that Jesus makes us free. So maybe some of you have already forgotten about that freedom from this morning. So I am here to remind you about your freedom and to remind you about Jesus. So our theme for camp is what? The ultimate race. Does anybody know our scripture? Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which, so, which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to... Who are we looking to? Jesus. We're looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. So this morning, Captain B talked about how Jesus is the prize. And we're supposed to keep our eyes on the prize. Who, what's the prize? Jesus. Jesus. Okay. You guys following? You remember what we talked about this morning? So we're going to keep talking about Jesus today. I normally don't tell you guys the titles of my sermons. But... I truly believe that this is from the Lord, and I am so excited to share this with you. Do you want to know what this is called? Do you want to know what I'm going to talk to you about tonight? Jesus, the living water, 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 water. <laughs> that is what we're talking about tonight. Jesus is the living water, okay? So I want you to think about the fastest kid in your class. Me. Oh, some of you are the fastest kid in your class. You're the fastest kid in your class? What? You're the fastest kid in your class? That's amazing. I see some fast kids all around. Okay. The fastest kid in your school. What? We have a lot of runners. Okay, I have a question. You ready, super kids? Thank you. Are you thinking about the fastest kid in your class? Okay. Well, super kids, I am not the fastest kid in my class. I do not even really like to run that much. But that's okay, right? So you've got, I am being honest, <laughs> you've got the fastest kid in your class. You've got Lieutenant Commander Aubrey. Okay, let's think about the Olympics and think about some people that run in the Olympics. Do they run pretty fast? Are they probably faster than the fastest kid in your class? Probably, yeah. They're probably really strong, really muscular. They've been running for years. So we've got like three different types of runners, types of people. But do you know, also, let's think about somebody that's never run a race in their life. Have any of you ever not ran a race? It's okay if you haven't. I'm just talking that we all have different experiences, okay? But there is one thing that we all need, no matter if you have never run at all or if you are an Olympian track star, okay? All of these people need one thing. Water. <laughs> yes! Water! We all have to drink water. I know that you all have been counting the number of times that I have sang the song. <laughs> what some of you don't know is that I've been singing it all over camp. <laughs> I've sang it with this group. I've sang it with that group. I've sang it with that group. I've sang it in the, in the Eternity Hall. I've been singing it all over the place. But does anyone know... All right, I need eyes and ears. 
Why do I sing that song all the time? Over and over. And hang on, hang on. You got to raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Am I just singing that song because it's a really catchy song? Am I just singing that song because it's my favorite song and I listen to it every day because it's just so fun? No. Okay, Grace, why do I sing that song over and over and over? Cadet Grace said, to remind us to drink water. Do you mean to tell me that you forget to drink water? Yes. Cadet Samuel said, yes, I forget to drink water. Super kids, I'm a grown-up, and do you know what? Sometimes I forget to drink water. What? The lady who sings a water song sometimes forgets to drink water. Sometimes I do because I get a little busy. And I'm driving around camp, and I'm reminding you guys to drink water, and I'm getting different things for you all and running around, and I carry this around with me. But even though this is with me in my golf cart all of the time, sometimes I still forget to drink water. But I know that some of you super kids also forget to drink water, even when I remind you to drink water, because some of you have been dealing with some effects of dehydration. Sad face. It's okay if you have. There is no condemnation. We are not mad at you. We love you very much. We just want you to stay healthy, and we just want you to drink water. That's all. So, these lovely coolers are all around campus, right? Have you seen these? Even though you've seen these, you've probably still forgotten to drink some water, haven't you? No? No? That means we've been doing our job. Great job, leaders. <laughs> You've been reminding your kids to drink water. These are all over the place. And even though you could have a giant orange cooler around you, and even though you could have leaders reminding you to drink water, we've still got to work on drinking the water, right? It's a process. We're all still working on it, right? We're doing great. We're strong. We're healthy. We're doing great. But this is all having to do with our natural bodies, right? Because we forget to drink water because we're having fun, because we're doing the zip line, because we're doing the rock wall, because we're swimming in the pool. We're swimming in the water, and sometimes we forget to drink the water. Don't drink the pool water. Do not drink the pool water. You have to get out of the pool. Drink this water, OK? But you could literally be surrounded by water in the pool and still not actually get out of it to go drink the water. But to keep our natural body strong, we have to drink the water. But tonight, we're going to talk about our spirits, OK? You know that you have a spirit? You are a spirit? That's who you are? You live in a body? Can you wiggle your arms around? And you have a soul. The soul means that it's your mind, and it's all of your feelings that you feel, your heart, and all of that, okay? All of those big emotions sometimes, that's your soul. So you have spirit, say spirit, spirit. Soul, soul, and body. So this kind of water is for your body, which is really good, and it's really important. But we're going to talk about the water that is for your spirit and the water that is for your soul, okay? You already know my sermon. It's from Jesus. Jesus is the living water. So let's look at some Bible verses, super kids. John chapter 4, verse 14. And I'll let you flip there, and I'm going to drink some water while you flip there. John, you could grab a water. You all had a water bottle in your seat. John chapter 4, verse 14. Give me a, say water if you're there. Water. <laughs> it says, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. What does eternal life mean? Forever. So this is Jesus, and he's talking to a woman, 
And he is saying that he has water that is going to help us have eternal life. Okay? Would you say that's pretty good water? Do you think he was talking about actual water? No. He's talking about spirit water. That's it, Cadet Riker. Let's look at some other verses. John chapter 7, verse 37 through 38 says, on the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and he cried out, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now, I know you've heard that word before because we sang it in that song. We're stirring up deep, deep wells. We're stirring up deep, deep water. We're talking about jumping in the river. We're not talking about an actual river, okay? Like that you can feel the water with your hands, right? We're talking about Jesus. We're talking about the ultimate race that we're running with Jesus. We're talking about the eternal water, the living water that Jesus gives to us so that we can run our race. Because did you know you cannot run a race without water? Naturally, your body can't run a race without water, but spiritually, you cannot run your race without the living water, which is Jesus, okay? I looked up some facts about marathon runners today because I told you I'm not a big fan of running, so I have never ran a marathon. Yeah, I've never done it. I don't really have a goal to do it either, so I probably won't, but I found out that you have to drink water before you run a marathon. Is that surprising? It's not surprising, right? You should drink water before you run a marathon. But did you know that they actually have to drink water while they're running the marathon? Yeah. They can't just drink a bunch of water before the marathon and then run the whole marathon with no water. Your physical body needs water before you run the marathon and while you're running the marathon. It actually says that they recommend one to two cups of water per hour of your marathon, which I didn't know how many hours it takes to run a marathon because I've never done it. If I tried, it would probably take me a lot of hours, okay? But the average time period of a marathon takes a little over four hours which I had to check several websites for that because that did not make sense to my brain because I was thinking it would be like a crazy amount. But this is like people that train for it and that know what they're doing. It's not just everybody off the street trying to run a marathon. They train and they train and they train and they grow stronger and stronger and stronger. So, and stronger. So that's like at least eight cups of water when you're running your marathon. So they've had a bunch of water before the marathon. They have like eight cups of water minimum while they're running their marathon. And then when they're done, when they cross the finish line, do you know what they have to do? Drink more water. They have to drink more water. So water is involved before they even start their race. Water is involved while they're running their race. And water is still involved at the end of their race. You know the cool thing about Jesus the word of God says that he was, he is, and he is to come. That's the living water. So think about it. Jesus, before you even existed, super kids, Jesus was. The living water was there for you. While you are here running your race, Jesus, the living water, is with you, helping you. After you finish your race on the earth, and you are with Jesus in heaven. He's still there, the living water, the eternal water with you. So Jesus is involved in every single step of your life, even before you knew him, okay? So when you receive Jesus for the first time, how many of you have received Jesus? You have received salvation. Jesus is the Lord of your life, and he is your Savior. Is that all the Jesus that you ever need. Do you say, Jesus, be my Lord. All right, I'm running my race. And then you never think about him again. 
You never talk to him again? No, that's not what we do. We say, Jesus, be my Lord, be my Savior, come into my life, do something amazing with it. And then you say, come on, Jesus, let's go run the race. And he's with you. And we talk to him, and he becomes our friend, and you get to know him, and you read the word, you learn more about him. That's what we do in Super Kids, right? Yes, a lot of you have already received Jesus. So we're not here at camp just because none of you know who Jesus is. Most of you know who Jesus is. But this step of your race, you still need Jesus. You still need the living water. So we're here at camp so that we can remind you to drink the living water. Just like we remind you to drink the natural water over and over and over and over again. We're here to remind you to just be with Jesus, to focus on the living water. Because he wants to fill you up daily. Did you know that? Miss Brittany said, how many of you swam with Jesus today? Yeah, I went swimming today. Can I be honest, though? When I was in the pool, I was thinking about the girls that were around me. I wasn't actively thinking in my brain, I'm swimming with Jesus. But I was because he was there. Were any of you thinking in that moment when you were playing with your floaties and jumping off the diving board that you were jumping off the diving board with Jesus? Or were you thinking about just jumping into the water? Yeah, that's okay. That's how our brains work. We think about the things that are in front of us and that we see. But our spirits and the Holy Spirit is there to help remind you in every moment that Jesus is with you, that the living water is is with you. I talked about how sometimes we can get distracted by good things, right? If you're in line to to go down the zip line, that's a good thing, right? The zip line is good. The zip line is fun. But maybe you're in line and you forget to drink your natural water and then your head starts hurting a little bit and that's probably not very good, is it? No, it's not. We can be the same way though, super kids, when we go to school. Sometimes we can go to school and not be thinking every single moment about Jesus in our brains, right? Right? Because maybe you're trying to solve a math equation, but Jesus is still with you, solving your math equation. The living water is still with you, helping you, refreshing you, strengthening you every single moment. And so our job is to receive Jesus the first time, like before your marathon, right? Receive that water, drink that water. But then every step of your marathon, you need to be taking times to come back to the living water, to focus on Jesus. This is why we tell you to read your Bible. We don't tell you to read your Bible just so that you can be really smart. We don't tell you to read your Bible just so you can quote a bunch of scripture We don't tell you to read your Bible so that you can win the sword drills. That's not why we do it. We tell you to read your Bible because Jesus is the word. Did you know that? The Bible says that the word became flesh. Flesh is your body. That means that this word became a human. His name is Jesus, right? Jesus is the word. So when you read this word, you're drinking the living water. You're drinking the living water. You're getting to know more and more and more about Jesus. It's why we put the word of God first place. How many of you have heard that before? We put the word of God first place. We're saying we put the living water first place. Because just like water is super important for our physical bodies, this water is super important for our spirits and for our souls. If your head is hurting, maybe you need some of this water. But if your mind is hurting, this is the water that you need. 
If your stomach is hurting, this might be the water that you need. But if your heart is hurting, this is the water that you need. The living water. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. We need him every day. Right? We can't run our race without him. He's not going to leave you. So it's not that Jesus, the living water, comes in and then he says, bye, and runs away from us. He doesn't do that. But sometimes we say, Jesus, come into my life. And then we go hang out with our friends over here. And we're the ones trying to run away or not thinking about him even if we don't mean to do it, right? So that's why it's important that we daily have time in the Word, that we daily spend time with Jesus, that we daily have that time in the living water because we need Him. We need to be strong. There are some crazy things that happen. Have any of you ever had any crazy things happen in your life or in your school, in your home? I have. In your workplace, I have adults. Craziness happens. But we need Jesus. We need the living water. There are so many things that try to pull our focus. This is what we're talking about. It's still your focus. Our eyes on Jesus. Because he is better than anything else. It's where does your focus go? Where does your focus go? I want to ask you, if you're out in line for the zip line and your head starts hurting, your focus is going to go to your head hurting, right? But really, your focus should go to, oh, I just need to go to the water. My head's hurting. I just need to go to the water. Just go to the water. Just go to the water. Just go to the water. Right? So if you're going about your day and you start feeling a little sad, I need to go to the water. Jesus, 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 I'm feeling sad. Fill me up with your joy. If you start missing your family, go to the water. Jesus, Jesus, I'm getting a little dehydrated. I need you. Fill me up. I set my focus on you. If you feel sick in your body, is that from Jesus? No. If you feel sick in your body, that's a distraction from the devil because he wants to pull your focus. He wants to pull your attention so that you forget to drink your water. Jesus only gives good things. Amen. That's a super kid. He knows. If it's good, it's God. And if it's bad, it's not. Right? So if you start feeling sickness in your body, or if a doctor has told you and your parents that your bone is broken, or that you're not growing right, or that something is going on in your brain, or that you need medication, or something is happening, these are all distractions, and the devil is trying to pull your focus, super kids. He's trying to pull your attention, but where does your focus go? Jesus, the living water, the living water, the living water. He is our prize. He is our focus. He is the one who's going to help us win our race. So does Jesus want you to read the Bible just so, like, bad things don't happen to you? Why does he want you to read your Bible? Why does he want you to know him? Does anyone know Hit it, Kayla. So that he knows more about what he says, that you know more about what he says and what he's called you to do. Braden, do you know? Because God's word. What do we know about Jesus? Hit it, Caleb. Why is he our Savior? Why did he die for us?
He wants us to do the right thing, yes, but even more than that. He wants us to know that he can heal us. We're getting there. Get at Joanna. Because he loves us. Jesus isn't asking you to wake up every morning and read the Bible because he just wants you to be really tired and wake up early. But he loves you. And this, this Bible, the living water, the word of God, is full of him telling you how much he loves you. You know, it feels good when somebody tells you that they love you. Yeah? When our mommies and daddies tell us that they love us and give us a hug. Or when Commander Jennifer tells you that she loves you because she does. It feels good, right? Jesus wants you to know that he loves you. And that's why he wants you to go to him. That's why he wants your focus on him. Because he's the best. Because he is love. God is love. So there's only good things that are found in him. And we keep our eyes on Jesus. We keep our eyes on love. We keep our eyes on the living water. We keep our eyes on the good things that he has for us. Even when there are some crazy things happening around us. Right, super kids? Is it possible for crazy things to be happening around you and you still keep your focus on Jesus? Yes. Yes. It is. But you have to remind yourself. At camp, it's pretty easy to drink your water because Lieutenant Commander Aubrey is constantly singing, water, 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 water. Let's drink some water. But when you go home, it's still summertime. It's still going to be really hot outside, but I am not going to be at your house singing. Water, 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 water. Let's drink some water. If you're playing at the park, I'm not going to pop out of the bushes and say, water, 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 water. Let's drink some water. But do you still need to drink water when you go home and play at the park? Yes. Yes. So when you're at camp, it's really easy to set your focus on Jesus because you wake up and your counselors have circle up time with you and they talk about Jesus. They talk about the living water. And then we go to morning devos and we talk about Jesus. We talk about the living water. And then we come to night chapel and we talk about Jesus. We talk about the living water. We are here to help you. We're your coaches, right? We've talked about that, that your counselors, your leaders, we're all your coaches this week, helping you run your race, helping you receive the living water. But when you go home, we're not going to be in your room every morning telling you, read your Bible, read your Bible, talk to Jesus, pray in tongues. It's something that you have to learn to do every single day, just like you learn to drink this water every single day, because our bodies need this water, and our spirits and our souls need this water, right? All you have to do, super kids, is drink the water. Drink the living water. All you have to do is set your eyes on Jesus. Focus on the good. I was talking to a super kid about that earlier. All you have to do is just think about the good thing. Think about Jesus. Think about what he has in store for you. Because Jesus is the word, and Jesus is the living water, and he is there when you start to feel dehydrated. When you start feeling sad, if you feel scared, I want to talk about fear for a moment. Where does fear come from? The devil. The word of God says that he has not given us a but 
You guys got it. They said he's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So what do you do when you start to feel afraid? <laughs> Drink the water, yeah. Go to the living water. Go to Jesus. Super kids, that's something that you have to learn now. But did you know that kids aren't the only ones that deal with fear? Did you know that? Earlier this week before camp, super kids, the devil tried to make me afraid. And do you know what came to my mind? I thought, what do you teach the super kids? What do we teach you? What do you do in that moment when you're afraid? We teach you that you focus on Jesus, that you receive his love for you, that you take authority, and that you speak to the fear, and you tell it to leave. Super kids, I'm a grown-up, and I had to do that. So this is something that you're learning now as a kid, but you need it every single day of your life. I need the living water every single day of my life, just like I need this water. Does that make sense? Yeah. Jesus is the living water. We can't go a day without him. We sang that too. We said, I don't want to go a day without him. I don't want to go a day without you. You don't have to go a day without Jesus because he's with you. But you just have to drink. You just have to drink. You just have to open the Bible and say, Jesus, I'm here. Jesus, I'm ready to drink from your word. Jesus, I want to learn more about you today. Jesus, I want to know you more. Jesus, fill me up with your living water. Jesus, fill me up with your truth. Jesus, fill me up with your goodness. Make me strong. Make me courageous. So at the beginning of tonight, we set our focus on Jesus, right? We set our minds on Jesus. Super kids, when I was praying for you this week, and even earlier today, there, there's a couple of things that the Lord has shown me that I want to pray over you guys tonight, okay? Because I, I believe that Jesus wants to help you set your focus on him. That there are some things, some crazy things that are trying to pull your focus, that are trying to pull your attention, that are trying to keep you from keeping your eyes on Jesus. And I want to start with loud noises. If loud noises make you feel nervous, if loud noises make you feel scared, I've watched it a little bit in here when we're praising the Lord. Is it a good thing to praise the Lord? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But I've watched the enemy try to pull your focus from praising Jesus. And he's trying to make it seem scary. He's trying to make it seem loud. He's trying to make, it, make you afraid. But Jesus came to set you free so that you could praise him as loud and as boldly as you possibly can. The word says that we love the Lord with all of our might, with all of our soul, with all of our strength. That means our praise is going to be a little loud sometimes, right? Thank you for watching Super Kid Academy at Eagle Mountain International Church. Kids, with your parents' permission, visit us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. You can also visit us in person on Sunday mornings and Wednesday night services. We'll see you next time at Super Kid Academy.